A long time ago, a famous Irish missionary called St. Brendan set sail off the coast of Ireland with no map or idea where he was going. The only thing he did know was that God had called him. So him and his friends and a wee tiny boat left what was familiar and cast off for undiscovered shores. Their confidence was that God's Spirit would be the wind in their sails, leading and guiding them through those uncharted waters to somewhere new. Now, 1,500 years later, we too are met with the same challenge and possibilities. Will we step out into the unknown and go? Or will we shrink back into the safety of what is familiar? One thing we quickly learn is faith is all about risk and adventure. Whether it's in moving to a foreign land or the simple act of loving others who are around us, the truth is those who make a difference in the world are always risk takers. And we as a church were never meant to be a timid club huddled together for safety, but a pilgrim family in progress chasing after the wild lion heart of God. Let our praises run wild and free Your lion heart is alive in me Let our freedom and joy begin With you we dance it upon our chains Do you ever wonder sometimes why we don't see the movement of God in our own lives and in our church services like the stories we read about in the Bible? Well, the Great Commission centers on the word go. We're commanded, yes, to gather for strength, but also to scatter for light. The Holy Spirit moves in us most when we move out of our comfort zones and into the world where the need is. In other words, the Holy Spirit is most active in us when we are most active in building His kingdom here. Since Adam and Eve left the garden, the whole story of scripture has been about a family on the move. A beautiful yet dysfunctional family, full of mistakes and forgiveness. Yet one thing's for certain, it was never about the lone wolf or the lonely hero. In fact, the only truly self-sufficient man that ever lived was Jesus. And he chose to live, travel and minister in community. He knew that the joys of friendship and brotherhood far outshone the pains of conflict and betrayal. Think about the children of Israel journeying from slavery to the promised land. Isn't that our story too, as God leads us out of our chains and into the promises He has prepared? And even though we feel overwhelmed by the size of the giants in our way and the lies that the enemy tells us, we have to hold on to the truth that there is no greater, stronger, or higher name than Jesus. And at His name, every giant will fall and every mountain will move. Every giant will fall, the mountains will move. Every chain of the past you've broken into. All the fear of the lies, we're singing the truth that nothing is imperfect. God doesn't call us family lightly, but He adopted us at the greatest cost because He loves us. I mean, we get to call the creator of the universe Father because He first called us sons and daughters. And we weren't created to journey through life alone, but we're called this family of God for a reason. Yet, so often it's easier to push each other away than to stay committed and connected. But aren't forgiveness and grace far more important than who's right and who's wrong? And isn't the kingdom of God about moving forward in unity, about standing shoulder to shoulder together through our best and our worst times? Just like those Irish saints of old who didn't believe in spiritual retreats, but in spiritual advance.
Let's be a celebrating family, whether it's raining or pure sunshine. We've got to break out of the cages of safety and fear, into the wide open spaces of the unknown, trusting that nothing is impossible with God. It's clear that the Bible doesn't ever imagine a static, stagnant church, but a dynamic group of adventurers stepping out into the unknown with the fearlessness of faith. And we were never intended to go this road alone. We were given to each other as family, and as family, we go. Sing it out.